Hi, I am Harty and our topic for today is the ultimate frisbee. The history of ultimate frisbee. The first remnants of ultimate can actually be traced back to somewhere around 1940s. It all started with a company in Connecticut called Frisbee Spy with Yale University. In close, approximately students would stop by all the time for delicious spy. These pie were sold in metal tins that were thrown actually pretty straight but only for a short distance. So, in 1948, Fred Morrison took it upon himself to design a disc that flows straighter and longer, and he succeeded. In 1951, Fred's invention led to the first mass-produced flying disc toy called the Pluto Platter, which was sold by the Mamo Toy Company. Unfortunately, in 1957, Frisbee's Pie Company closed its door for good. But their name forever lives on a flying plastic circle, now we call the frisbee. When did really people start playing ultimate frisbee? We could trace it back to about 1966 to 1968 in Maplewood, New Jersey. It was at Columbia High School where Joel Silver and other few students first introduced the idea of an ultimate frisbee game to the student council. The four pioneers of the game are said to be Joel Silver, Jared Cass, Johnny Hines, and Buzzy Hurling. The first and second edition of Fools were drawn by Buzzy Hurling and later refined by Johnny Hines and Joel Silver. Currently, we're using the 11th edition rule. So Ultimate has come a long way. In 1970, the first interscholastic game was played between Columbia High School and Melbourne High School. The first conference of Ultimate was around in 1971. Ultimate began to gain some serious traction across the world. In 1974, the Sweetest Frisbee Foundation was founded. In 1975, Japanese Frisbee Disc Association was founded. In 1976, Australian FDA. In 1977, Belgium FDA and Austrian FDA. In 1978, Finland and Danish. In 1979, the UPA was founded. And in 1980 was the first European Championship. In 1984, the World Flying Disc Federation was founded, which is the governing body for all disc sports. The first World Club Championship was held in Cologne, Germany in 1989. Ultimate is growing extremely fast. 2012, there are 100,000 members on 30 countries and approximately growing. 10 Simple Rules of Ultimate The field A rectangular shape with end zones at each end. A regulation field is 64 by 37 meters with end zones 80 meters deep. Cones are generally used to mark the corners of the end zones. Starting play. Each point begins with both teams lining up on the front of their respective end zones. The defense throws a disc to the offense. A regular game has seven players. Scoring. Each time the offense completes a pass into the defense end zones, the offense scores a point. The first team to 17 goals wins with a time cup of 100 minutes. Movement of the disc. The disc may be advanced in any direction, completing a pass to a teammate. Players can run with the disc similar to netball. The person with the disc has 10 seconds to throw the disc. Change of position. When a pass is not completed, the defense immediately takes in possession of the disc and becomes the offense. Substitution Players not in the game may replace players in the game after a score and during an injury timeout. Non-contact No physical contact is allowed between players. Picks and screens are also prohibited. A foul occurs when contact is made.
foul. When a player initiates contact on another player, a foul occurs. When foul disrupts possession, the play resumes at if the possession was retained. If the player committing the foul disagrees with the foul call, the play is redone. Self-referring Players are responsible for their own foul and line calls. Players resolve their own disputes. Spirit of the Game Ultimate relies upon a spirit of the game that places the responsibility for fair play on every player. There are no referees. Competitive play is encouraged but never at the expense of respect between players. Adherence to the rule and the basic joy of play. Ten important skills you need in Ultimate Frisbee. General Throwing how consistent are your throws? General throwing is a critical skill to have. If you struggle with throwing consistently, you'll be a liability when your team is on offense and you are on the field. Power throwing. Power throwing a disc is one of the most fun skills to acquire. Who doesn't like gripping a disc and throwing it as far as they can? The flight of a disc is special and there is a whole awesome sport that revolves around this. Break throwing. It might be daunting to break the mark but with practice fakes, shimmies and different release points and angles you can acquire this skill. Speed. If you have great speed, you can find success on the ultimate field even if other skill on this list is lacking. Without speed, you can still be successful by mastering other skills, but with enough of it, you can have an instant impact. Reading the field Reading the field is the ability to take in information. The more information we take in with our eyes can help provide clues to what is not only happening in the field, but what is going to happen. Mental processing speed and capacity. Mental processing speed is the ability to make actionable decisions based on the information you gather from reading the field. Endurance. Endurance in ultimate cannot be understated. Our sport requires long runs, cuts, sprints, jumps, and other cardio taxing. Defense. Defense is an art requiring as much mental discipline as physical ability. Simply, great defenders are able to control their matchup versus what I witness as the norm in ultimate that offense has it easy. Catching. Catching every disc that comes your way helps your team win games. The amount of possessions you can save your team if you catch will adds up. Mental toughness. Having a strong mental game allows you to play at your peak, talent consistently. The ability to play good ultimate when things aren't going well can make you a better player than somebody that has more talent than you but is prone to moments of lapses. That's all for today. I'm hoping to play with you soon.